Every mannequin, every mannequin. <laughs> yeah, uh, great song by Huey Long and one of his friends, I believe. All the way back in the 30s. You can actually find it on Spotify today, but it's still a great song. But yeah, welcome, friends, to the War on Populism. I'm Gabriel Stone, and this is my new podcast, Episode 1. Yeah, um, Huey Long... Is known as one of those figures that is, is demonized, but also looked at as a savior. Um, yeah, he's 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 definitely my, one of my favorite po- politicians, if not my favorite politician of all time. Um, yeah, he's just he's just a great figure in history, and uh, and he uh, did some remarkable things in his career. He uh, he built roads in in Louisiana, and he. Uh, Helped the poor. He he gave liter, liter literacy programs to uh, the poor so they can learn how to read, and he also um, you know just helped quality of life for average Louisianers or whatever you call them. He just did great for uh, his community, and uh, he he was a governor of um, of Louisiana, and he was also a senator for a couple years, I believe. Um, but yeah, he was he was just a great figure in history, and uh, he is he is like like I said demonized, but he's also one of the one of the most interesting figures in history, if you ask me. And that's why we're going to get into his policies a little bit later, and uh, his proposals that he did throughout his career. Um, it's from his website, um, but yeah, but this this topic about Huey Long. Is actually kind of a uh, you know controversial because you know people say he was he was he was a friend of Hitler or if he wasn't a friend of Hitler. Um, I tend to believe he wasn't. I believe that he was a man of the people and he uh, yes he did have armed guards around him all times, but um, I believe that he was you know a, a great figure in history for for showing that he's not going to let Congress bully him bully him and uh you know he he just got things done i mean yeah he did controversially but um he just got things done and that's why i love about huey long is that he just he just uh championed through and uh he got things done but yeah um huey long was born in louisiana um i believe it was winfield um, and it was, it was actually a pretty poor town for the time, but, uh, it, it was actually, it was more middle class in my, in my book. Cause, uh, he did have a house and he did have a, you know, a quite normal childhood, but, um, he, uh, actually went to, uh, I think he dropped out of college. Yeah. He dropped out of college. Um, and he he barely passed high school because of his personal life and uh yeah he just uh was he just was a uh, not that great a student early on <laughs> and uh you know he basically just uh he went to he ended up going to law school out of all places and uh he became uh in the con he went in the congress i believe and he ran against uh um 
he ran against a couple people and he failed. He failed in 1924, I believe. And uh, I believe it was 19, 1928 he got elected as a as a in an office. But uh, yeah, he just he just uh, he did not have. He was not that, you know. He he was he was not that school oriented oriented and like, you know. He just uh, he just, you know, wasn't good at school. But in in my opinion, he uh, did great as a as a both a senator and a, a governor, and he he did a lot of good things. Like I said, and we're gonna actually get into a. Uh, his proposals um, and also his his accomplishments. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing he did, and this is really controversial, because he was a, he was known as this thing called distributist, which is different from capitalist and communist. I know it's it's a quite controversial because not a lot of people know what this is, but distributism is basically a Catholic. It's in the Catholic, uh, in the Catholic group, or Catholic. Uh, it has to do with a relationship between the economy and the Catholic Church, church basically, and uh, and it's basically it basically uh, says distributism basically says that we're going to give everybody a business. We're going to let them own it pr- privately, but we're going to give everyone a business, and we're going to let everyone have equal chance at success. Which I think is better than capitalism, where it just, uh, you know, the rich exploit the poor, you know, and it's better than socialism, where everyone's totally equal and there's no growth in society. So, yeah, distributism is basically, uh, I like to call it social capitalism, because uh, it's uh, not quite state capitalism, but I, I just believe that it's a good alternative. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a. Uh, it's a it's a great ideology, and uh, some people say, "Oh, he was a fascist." I don't believe he was a fascist. I believe that he was a distributist slash uh, social democrat. Um, it may be a little bit of a a Christian Christian extremism, but um, overall, I think he was a great uh, sen- senator and and governor, and he just got stuff done. I mean. Let's look at his uh his proposals. Uh, he capped personal fortunes at fifty million each, which is equivalent to like six hundred million today. Six hundred million. So basically, you could not have um. You could not have personal for- fortunes over six hundred million, and later it was reduced to five to eight million, or sixty to ninety six million today, and he gave people necessities to live on which is a home automobile and radio and other things, which were totally, totally not normal for the time, especially in Louisiana. It was like one of the poorest states at the time. It was actually, I think it was the poorest state at the time, especially in the South. Um, but yeah, it, it was just great because he had this thing called Share Our Wealth Program, which uh, basically gave people, like I said, a home automobile and radio and it also just gave people hope um, cuz you know like the the rich were exploiting were, ex- were basically exploiting the poor and uh L- Huey knew that cuz he was he's lo- lower class or uh lower middle class and he uh he hated he hated these corporations and that's why I love him so much is cuz he did not kiss the ass asses of the corporations or the CEOs and he actually got stuff done, and he, oh hell, he did. He took on the Standard Oil Company and the Gulf Refining Company, and uh, and he he was gonna, he was almost gonna destroy. I think um, he he actually went to court with uh, Standard Oil, I believe. And uh, man, did was he was he uh, you know successful? I mean, he won a lawsuit against them, and. Uh, he also did this other thing where he limited annual income to one million dollars each, which is about twelve million today. So, like, your annual income is is about 
12 million dollars in today's money which was one million dollars each back then so yeah it was it was it was a really um you know you could you could see the communist influence but he was not a communist he's actually said that this was the only defense against communism because he knew he knew the great depression was hurting people and he actually wanted to uh you know give the people something to believe in which is basically you know having hope and having an automobile radio and home and you know he didn't want people to walk the streets he even said that in his one of his famous speeches that he's gonna have he would have no one walk the streets or hardly anybody because he cared about the people and uh you know he just he just was a was a fighter for the you know the for everyone and that's why i think he's so uh, amazing you know like you know he was just a great uh a great great planner and uh he had this thing called a war chest where basically he would uh if you worked if you worked for Huey Lawn or uh you know were a part of his team you would uh have to chip in to his war chest and uh you'd use it for projects um across the state great great uh, you know thing for uh for Louisiana Louisianers or whatever you call them I still don't know what to call Louisianers or whatever but uh but yeah I mean it was just a great thing you know what he did for the war chest but also um he limited get this he limited inheritances to five million dollars each which is 60 million today inheritances so that means like uh how much you get if you're born into a rich family and uh you know he let he is about six million dollars today 60 million and uh yeah it just why don't we have that today why the hell don't we have that today that would help so many people so many people because especially during this uh pandemic the 2020 coronavirus pandemic this would help so much people if we did these policies and uh you know just piss me off because you know the democratic party is way different from what it was back in the 60s even but especially back in the 30s i mean it's a it's a big difference but uh yeah um and then he also Huey Long, the Keenfish, as he's nicknamed, he also uh, guaranteed every family an annual income of two thousand dollars, which is the one or one third of the national average of the nation. And it's like, wow, wow. I mean, like everybody gets two thousand dollars or any an annual income of two thousand. I mean, that's that's more than you could hope for. I mean, especially for, you know, poor people, people out of work, you know, but that's it. That's all he gave for uh, any annu annual income, which is basically like a check from the government. You know, that's what they do in a lot of, uh, you know, Scandinavian countries today and uh, European Union mostly. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a great, it was a very interesting development for the time. And uh, he also gave free education and free college education and vocational training and training. I mean, can you imagine having like even free college today? I mean, that would be that helps so many Americans, so many Americans. And, you know, it just, you know, breaks my heart to know that, you know, there's going to be, you know, even more people without hope you know especially during this pandemic but you know it still gets to me um but yeah um what else is there okay so he uh also had old age pensions for people over 60 which was uh great for elderly people because uh a lot of them didn't have pensions or uh you know or they weren't backed basically so so yeah pensions for old people over 60 um six years old and uh 
He also gave veterans benefits and health care to veterans and uh, the people who served. And uh, it was great for, uh, you know, people in the military because uh, they got, they basically got uh, health care. Yeah, they got dental care and they got um, just stuff to keep them, you know, functioning. You know, like it's amazing in this country, the USA, like they don't, they don't give you hardly anything for free. I mean, I'm not a communist or even a socialist, but um, like I said, I'm a distributist. I believe that's the best economic system. But, but yeah, I mean, this is a, this is really good policies. I mean, you know, you could say it's too good to be true policies because, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, like I don't see anybody doing this today in Congress, but, uh, or in the Senate, but you know, it's 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 still interesting if you ask me. Um, what else did he do? He uh, he basically gave everyone a thirty-hour work week. You know, and that's just amazing because you know, you know, like people are overworked, and you and that's what the corporations do. They they exploit their workers, and they basically you know, give them less, give them less pensions and give them less, give the workers less time off and, and, uh, benefits. That's what they want. That's what corporations want. That's what happens when you basically have, uh, have, a have the corporations run the government. And, uh, I'm not for total governmental control. My policy is that I believe that, um, that, the government should have control, should regulate these uh, these businesses that are cheating the American people. Because we see it. We see, we've see been seeing it during the pandemic, how they've like quadrupled their their net worth. It's, it's just, it's laughable. It's absolutely laughable. And uh, yeah, it just sucks for the average worker. Um, and then... He also gave people a four-week vacation for every worker. Four-week vacation. Can you imagine that today? Four-week vacation. Yeah, that's what he gave to uh, Louisiana people. <laughs> he gave them four-week vacation and uh, greater. And he also did greater regulation of commodity pro production to stabilize prices. So yeah, so yeah, greater regulation. To uh, basically stabilize the market, you know, the stock market. That's that's uh, ideal. That's ideal. That that should that shouldn't even be, you know, questioned. I mean, I mean, maybe if like it's overly, like, over regulation, but regulating the production of to stabilize prices, if it's for the best interest of the nation, it should be regulated i mean there's no reason why i don't think it should i mean or anybody should think it should shouldn't it? i mean i mean it just it's laughable i mean what we have today compared to what huey long basically did he was a true populist because uh you know he he did he did what the elite or the ruling class didn't want him to do he uh fought back and he gave people hope that they didn't have before and that's why that's that's why he's uh so interesting to me. You know, he's so he's uh he he's just such a great figure in history and uh yeah and uh you should read more about him, um at his book, Every Man a Keen, um, his audio autobiography. It's really interesting. He talks about, you know, like his plans and uh you know, just how to to make, you know, just, just an autobiography of his life, you know, and, you know, just, uh, just really sickening what these corporations get away with. They don't care about the people. I mean, we all know that. I mean, but, but especially compared to what they had, even in FDR's administration, what they, what, what there was then compared to what there is now, especially during the pandemic. It's it just, it's, mind-boggling what they've gone away with but yeah um 
so yeah, I'm not interested in uh in what you know Trump or Biden has to say. They they don't care about the regular people. Bernie Sanders should have won, you know, the Democratic nomination because uh he was for the people and uh you know that's what he Elon was. He was basically a Bernie Sanders with a Donald Trump image and uh you know he got stuff done. And uh, it was for the best of the people. And he was a left-wing populist. He was uh, he was definitely more left-leaning. But he was also, he had conservative uh, social policies where he believed in, uh, you know, church. And, you know, he believed in, you know, the, in, in the Bible. Or at least he said he, did, he was. And, uh, and, yeah, he was just a really religious guy. And, uh, you know... He just was more conservative leaning when it came to, you know, social issues. But on economic policy, he was definitely more uh, leftist. You could tell because he was for the people and he was for, uh, he was anti-business or not business. Well, he's, he's kind of anti-business. I mean, he wasn't totally anti-business, but he was anti-big business, especially Standard Oil. It was just a... Uh, it was just uh, horrible what they were doing. Uh, Standard Oil, you know, it just, uh, you know, it just. I, I'm glad that um, Huey was taking on the corporations of his day, because that just showed that you know he basically, you know, wasn't gonna be anybody's bitch. You know, he was gonna, he was gonna do what was right for the people, and uh, we need more politicians like that today, and. Uh, that doesn't bow down to the corporate establishment, you know, and that's just how I feel. I mean, I'm not a Republican or Democrat. I'm, I'm more independent, but I'm more left leaning when it comes to economic policy, and I'm more and I'm more uh, conservative when it comes to social policy. So you could say I'm a conservative Democrat. You could say I'm a social Democrat. You could say I'm I'm a Christian Democrat. You could say whatever, but I'm definitely more uh nationalistic and about and uh and uh you know and in policy and uh but i'm more economic i'm more leftist but yeah that's that's basically what i believe for now but let's get back to what huey long did um he, he also had national public works which i guess were like uh you know um you know, projects for the communities in Louisiana. And he also gave people FDIC bank insurance, labor rights, minimum wage, and 40-hour work week standards. Yeah, yeah, that's that's another thing. He gave labor rights to uh, to the people, and uh, minimum wage was uh, pretty good for the time. He also gave people farm assistance, um, public utility regulation. So he regulated the public utilities um, in his in his, uh, his state, and uh, he had a graduated income tax and inheritance tax, which helps millions of people in Louisiana, millions. And uh, yeah, it was just a great thing for uh, for for Louisiana. And he also. Um, had he also gave people Medicare and Medicaid, which is what FDR did, but he gave it to Louisianians. Um, you know, he just gave it to people in Louisiana, and yeah, it was a great thing for them. And uh, he gave people food stamps. You don't hear about that much any today, don't you? Especially in my state. Um, I mean, maybe they do, but I don't ever see food stamps in my state. Um, Washington, but yeah, um, and also he uh, he he gave people housing assistance. The Lawn Administration implemented an ambitious road building program that employed ten percent of the nation's highway workers. Ten percent of the nation's highway workers, not the state. Ten percent of the nation's highway workers, I and mean, that's just amazing, in my opinion. And uh, twenty-two thousand men was uh how many were were uh, working 
And uh, by 1932, the state had 5,000 miles of new paved and gravel roads. Four years later, there were 9,700 miles of new roads and 111 bridges, doubling the size of the state's highway system. Just building more roads, that's, that's what he's mostly known for, is uh, the Huey Long, uh, uh, I think it's railroad or, uh, or bridge. No, yeah, the Huey Long Bridge. Huey P. Long Bridge. Um, yeah, it was just, he, he did great when it came to bridges and streets and infrastructure in general. I mean, a lot of stuff that you see in Louisiana, a lot of the infrastructure you see was built by Huey Long. And that says something. And then he also, um, we'll see, he, uh, he, uh, oh yeah, he, the new roads not only lowered the cost of doing business, but they saved the average driver more than $118 per year, which is 1400 in today's dollars in gasoline and maintenance. So not only is he raising the taxes on the rich, but he's lowering the taxes on the um, lower income families, especially for gas and maintenance. I find that amazing. And uh, yeah, the Lawn Administration initiated construction of more than 100 bridges, including the massive Huey P. Lawn Bridge, which I always said on the Mississippi River, Mississippi River, and many other modern steel structures that are still used today. Worker brave snakes, alligators, and other dangers to build these bridges and concrete causeways across the swamps and marshlands. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, yeah, I, I can't even imagine what, you know, the workers thought, you know, having to deal with alligators and snakes and other, other reptiles. <laughs> yeah, um, and a cornerstone of Huey, Huey Long's programs as governor was an initiative to modernize Louisiana's dil, dilapidated, dilapidated or non-existence infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, he, they they didn't have any infrastructure, no infrastructure, in in uh, Louisiana hardly in 1930, hardly any. And then he came in and he built infrastructure and he improved the state by a long shot, a long freaking shot. Yeah, and uh, he uh, he also built more roads, more schools, and hospitals, and other public works. He, his improvements brought Louisiana into the 20th century, as symbolized by the modern skyscraper of capital, state capital he built. He also built the state capital. I mean, you can't you can't deny his com- accomplishments. I mean, it's truly something to to uh, you know accomplish you know for him to you know say that he did he did well i mean there's no doubt that he did well i mean he just he didn't he didn't back down you know and uh he also in new orleans um he constructed seven mile seawall around lake pond pond chart train and built a modern airport one of the nation's largest I don't know if it's still the largest today, but I'm pretty sure it's one of the largest airports today. And he built that too. And uh, and uh, he also expanded facilities at Charity Hospital in the port of New or- Orleans and piped a cheap supply of natural gas in the city to, to other population centers. So yeah, he also um, expanded Charity Hospitals, which was uh, really good for the time because... Uh, Sure, there's a lot of poor people. Um, Juan initiated the construction of public hospitals and schools. He tripled the size of Louisiana's Louisiana LSU in, in building the new department facilities and modern football sta- stadium, as well as a new medical school, which is amazing because, uh, you know, he introduced that, uh, his new med- medical school. And uh, just to say, just to say, I mean, he is, he is so in- innovative. I mean, he, 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 I mean, at this point, I mean, he wasn't a racist, I don't think. I don't think he was a racist because it was actually quite normal to be racist at that time, but he was not racist. He actually wanted everyone to have equal opportunity. There's even a quote saying, like, he believed that 
you know, the Negro was equal to the to the white man. And, uh, you know, he was just really egalitarian in views. And, you know, he just, uh, he just was for the people, you know. That's what I love about him. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, he, uh, to accommodate the growing state government, Lawn built a new state capitol building. The Art Deco style skyscraper was the tallest building in the south. The tallest in, in the whole region. Amazing. And uh, he also built a new governor's mansion modeled after the White House. And uh, modeled after the White House, yeah. <laughs> you could tell that he had ambitions for the presidency. Um, yeah, and he uh, asserted that previous termite infested mansion and it was not good enough for him though though it had been good for for his predecessors yeah so he had to upgrade it so that's what um he did and uh he also um what else did he do he uh expanded the public education system so he's really pro-education and he made it possible for every child to attend school. Every child. And uh, his administration established a public school in every community. Provided free test textbooks, busing all, all the students. And he made higher education possible for thousands of high school graduates by expanding Louisiana State University and establishing scholarships. So yeah, he established scholarships for LSU, which was great for the time. And uh, he, he initiated a massive adult literacy program teaching a hundred thousand adults to read hundred thousand mind-boggling Huey Long also champ championed the idea that education in every child's birthright was every child's birthright and he restructured the tax system to shift the financial burden of education from poor families to in par parishes to the state so yeah it's just more uh more education for the poor and uh upon taking office long pushed a bill through the legislature to provide free textbooks for every louisiana student so yeah every louisiana student got uh um got free textbooks which is amazing um they also opposed long's plan to finance the program with a tax on oil production Standard Oil again. And uh, with free textbooks, school enrollment instantly increased to 20%. So more people were going to school, less people were being poor or dying. Great development. And when the Caddo Parish School Board refused to distribute free textbooks to poor students on the philosophical grounds that the proud families of Sh Shreveport should not be forced to accept charity from the state. Lawn withheld authorization to locate Barsdale Air Force Base in Shreveport until children received the textbooks. Lawn's education initiatives, initi initiatives built new public schools and provided free blessing to ensure all students could attend school. All students. And uh, he also established adult vocational schools and night classes that taught 100,000 of uh, the state's 238,000 illiterate adults to read by 1932 just more more accomplishments and uh as part of his state modernization program Huey tripled the size of Louisiana State University also known as LSU opening the enrollment to all able poor students and building it from one of the finest universities in the south and uh yeah I, I don't I don't think the tax dollars lie <laughs> and uh you know he also in 1930 he initiated a massive building program on campus to expand the physical plant and add departments by 1940 1936 lsu had the finest facilities in the south a top-notch facility of 394 professors a new medical school where 6,000 students and a winning football team in only eight years it had risen in size from 80th in the nation to 20th and uh, it was the 11th largest state university in the nation. 11th largest state university. Mind-boggling again. Um, 
Lon, Lon's first step was to quadruple the size of marching band from 28 to 125 and develop a first-rate football team. He became the state's most prominent Tiger fan, coaching plays, giving locker room pep talks, and personally recruiting top talent for the team. And uh, LSU fever swept the state as reduced tuition and needed base scholarships allowed students from all regions to flock to Baton Rouge to study. Lon financed these improvements by arranging from, for the state to purchase a creage from the LSU campus, which had joined, joined the grounds of new state capitol building. And uh, to the consternation of his critics, Lon essentially diverted $9 million for LSU expansion and increased the annual operating budget to $2.8 million. And uh, he also loved music, like I said, how he played that in the beginning, Every Man of Keen. So yeah, Haley Lawn's love of music and his university inspired him to write a number of songs for Louisiana State University in collaboration with the, his good friend Castro Carrizo. I think it was the same guy who sang that in the beginning. Um, these include Darling of LSU and Touchdown for LSU, which is still played before every LSU football game. Did not know that, actually. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, when Lawn had announced had announcement for the student body, a large gong on campus signaled everyone to rush to the Greek theater to hear the governor. In 1934, Lawn announced that he had arranged for several trains to carry the entire student body to the Tigers away game at Vanderbilt University in Nashville to boost the team's morale. He gave seven dollars to any student needed it in order to go to the game. So he basically gave free tickets to to the to the fans. I mean <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? It's family friendly show everyone. <laughs> um he also uh he also improved health care in Louisiana, like I said, for the charity hospital system. And uh what else did he do? Blah blah blah. He uh immunizations for the rural population. Um yeah, he also um he also did a lot for the rural poor citizens. And he offered opportunity and tools for advancement. Um, in 1936, he uh, his, his programs and progressive policies saved the average Louisiana family more than $425 a year in daily living expenses, equivalent to five th over 1000 a day. Wow, that is amazing. Um, yeah, just amazing. Uh, and uh, his... his uh, his hard surface roads and bridges saved the average family $150 a year in tolls and ferries, which is over almost 2000 a day. Reduced gas consumption and wear to tear saved car owners in another $118 a year, which is almost 1500 $1, today. So, so he's just basically saving people like thousands in expenses. That's just amazing. And, uh... <laughs> It just showed his populism, you know? That's why it's called the war on populism, guys. You want populist leaders. Populist politicians for the people. That's in Latin. It literally means people in Latin. Populism. All right. Um, personal property taxes were reduced by the homestead exemption, which eliminated taxes on every household's first uh, $2,000 of poverty. In 1928, most homes were worth less than $2,000, saving the average family $65 annually, or $780 today. 80% of the all homeowners um, paid no personal property taxes under the new system. The homestead exemption remains a popular tax exemption in Louisiana. So it's still used in Louisiana to this very day. It shows the influence, man. I'm telling you. Um, automobile license fees were slashed. Rates on trucks were cut from from twenty eight dollars to three percent, or uh, three dollars, and rates on cars fell from fifteen dollars to six dollars. Personal property taxes on cars were eliminated. The average farmer saved 
twenty dollars a year or two hundred forty dollars today. And the average family saved nine dollars or one hundred eight dollars today. The point tax was eliminated, which basically allowed um, uh, them to vote without paying the required fee of two dollars or twenty four dollars today. Over two years, um, this tax, which was due every Christmas, granted a whole class of citizens from participating in the elective process. So, like a very few. So, if you don't know this. Basically, very few Louisianians participated in the voting process. It was basically the inner cities, and that's it. But under Huey Long, he, he expanded the the um, voting process to, to almost everyone, and he uh, it showed. I mean, he, he, he definitely was very popular for his time. He even had his own radio show um, where he spoke to the people, which is really interesting in my opinion. Um... He also protected families from losing their homes during the Great Depression. Yeah, a lot of people are losing their homes today and nobody gives a crap. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> um, you know, electric, electricity rates were also cut, saving the average family $27 a year or $324 today. Um, his banking policies, his state banking policies and personal intervention friend bank closures saving thousands of Louisianians from financial losses of the 4,800 banks that collapsed between 1929 and 1932 only 7 were in Louisiana only 7 out of the 4,800 banks that collapsed between 1929 and 1932 absolutely amazing um, Huey Long's election in 1928 ushered in the democratic revolution in Louisiana giving average citizens a stake in their government for the first time in the state's history. By turning turning out the aristocratic ruling establishment and repealing the poll tax, law enabled more than a quarter million citizens to the opportunity to vote, nearly doubling the size to electorate, to electorate the year following his assassination. Yeah, he got assassinated, you guys didn't know, in 1935. Um, it was by Dr doctor and uh his, i think he was close to him um he uh you know basically got shot and you could still see the bullet hole today in the marble um at the louisiana state uh you know house and uh yeah and uh and basically when he was senator he actually had people run for him he he literally had like a puppet of him run for for governor while he was a senator and uh i think he actually won um so that he had more influence by being a senator and almost a governor at the same time he still had the the state building it's just amazing <laughs> i mean he definitely was he definitely was was authoritarian i will give you that he also pushed things through through way too quick but he got stuff done, and he uh, he showed people what he was made of. Um, political corruption and bribery was rampant. Legislators were unsalaried and received a per, per diem pay, payment for each day. The legislator was in session. House members received $10 a day, and senators received $20 a day. The, the lieutenant governor also received a per diem and only the governor received a salary, seven thousand five hundred a year in free residence. Traditionally, the governor brought his support through the political patronage system, promising the state jobs and lucrative contracts to supporters. Big corporations usually resorted to offering good jobs and cash in exchange for friendly votes. Um, so yeah, he uh, he uh. The big corporations usually resorted to offering good jobs in exchange for friendly votes. So I guess the corporations didn't really like him that much. So, you know, they just did not like him. Um, Huey Long also promised voters a fair shake from the state government, or ridiculed the ruling establishment from their self-serving deals and indifference to the public's plight. He pledged to provide free education, good roads, and decent standard of living. Which I said. Um, 
and uh and yeah I mean he also uh he also won support for his agenda by using the political patronage system to his advantage and uh Installing supporters in every level of government and winning legislative support favors of threats. Um, in the face of fierce opposition, um, Lon wrestled power away from his enemies, created on a mighty political machine of his own. Opponents characterized Lon as a power hungry dictator. Yeah, a lot of people looked at him as a dictator, but I think he was a champion of the people because he actually got stuff done through the through the courts and. Uh, you know he did work really well at that. He, he he used his bullying to basically help the people. I mean that's what he did. He bullied Congress and uh, the Senate. You know, yeah. And uh, basically, Long did not enjoy one of his greatest victories, the elimination of the poll tax, which occurred shortly before his assassination in 1935. Yeah, Dr. Weiss again was the one who uh, assassinated him. And uh, by 1936, by the 1936 election, more than 278,000 citizens registered to vote for the first time. 278,000 new ones registered to vote for the first time. And on his final note, um, Huey Long transformed Louisiana politics. His programs improved the lives of millions of Louisianians. Oh, I did get it right, Louisianians. <laughs> Nationally, his advocate advocacy of populist causes led to the creation of Social Security, veteran benefits, federal student loans, and other programs still enjoyed by the Americans today. Whew. Well, yeah, he uh, he definitely uh, helped with Social Security, and he actually was going to run, on a final point, he was actually going to run against uh, FDR, but couldn't because he died before the election. But I actually think he would have won if uh, he, you know, would have ran and didn't get killed, didn't get shot. But, uh, but yeah, I, it's just amazing what uh, he did for his people. And uh, he, he just did great things. He was a true populist. He wins the, he, he uh, passes the populist test for the war on populism. He tried to stop the war on populism, but did not end his favor. Apparently, but um, yeah. If you guys want, and this is the last thing I'll I'll say about this topic. Um, one get this: one dollar in 1930 is equivalent to about twelve dollars today. So that's twelve times as much in value. That's how much inflation's gone up in 80 years. But yeah, um. I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of A War on Populism. Um, like I said, I'm going to be uh, streaming more and I'm going to, um, it's just a great, this is a great podcast. I, uh, I'm hoping that this will blow up and, uh, you know, I'm just hoping that you guys learn something, you know, he be long, a true populist. And, uh, and I, on that note, um, you can find me on Twitter, the War on Populism, and uh, my YouTube channel, the War on Populism, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. That's right. I weep for slumber, America, land of brave and true, with castles and clothing and food for all. All belongs to you. Every man a king, for you can be a millionaire. But there's something belonging to others. There's enough for all people to share. When it's sunny June and December too, or in the winter time or spring, there'll be peace without end. Every neighbor a friend. With every man, a king. What do you think about that? I think it's fine. Don't I think put it around, huh? Senator, I think it's fine.